All right, John, we haven't had a guest on this show in quite a while, but this guest is somebody that you actually booked for me to interview way back in the day. His name's Carl Fredericks. He is a New Japan strong wrestler. Carl, what's going on, man? Long time no chat. Yeah, how you doing, man? It's been a it's been a minute. Last time we talked, I was was it that maybe even pre uh, BFD or was I at least into that at that point? Yeah, it was right. Or, yeah, I think so. It's God. It had to have been, man. Yeah, well, several, cause, cause several years ago, like like two thousand. Gosh, was it like fifteen or sixteen or something like that. Uh, pro- pro- sixteen or seventeen, I'm guessing, because okay. like it's crazy now thinking in the in the grand scheme, because just a few weeks ago I hit seven years, mm-hmm. so now you know I th- I think back like you know I know John like APW and mm-hmm. you know the last time I worked APW is right before I left so it was 2018, so now I'm on the end yeah. of where it was like four or five years ago that I was back in this phase of my career, which was now like the smaller portion of my career. I've been in New Japan longer than I was unsigned if that makes sense now at this point which is crazy you know yeah so, that's, that's so, amazing so john why don't you introduce carl not, and people know who carl is but more so from the perspective of when you met him and sort of what you saw in him back then to where he is now because i because that to me that's kind of the amazing thing because one of the things we talk about on this podcast a lot is you know john's relationship with some some guys who back in the day we're kind of young. John, you know, was booking. Oh, he's been, yeah, he's been with me since the jump. I mean, essentially, like my at least my entire APW run, which started only like a year, a little over a year into my career. So, I mean, like he's 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 got like the fresh, one of the fresh or like biggest first impressions of me out of anybody. Him, Marcus Mack, uh, you know, like Joe DeFalco, anyone here on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Definitely being the NorCal guy, John's the guy <laughs> would know. Well, when I, after Premiere closed down, which is my promotion Premiere, I, you know, Marcus called me and he's like, why don't you come back and book for APW? And I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, and it's just, I was kind of, kind of burnt out. But then, you know, I decided to come down and, and check it out and work with Marcus. And I always got along, even when Marcus and I got along, I've known him since like 1997. So we, you know, we've always got along oh, really, really well. You guys were and, babies back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're just... We're like in the crowd I, of APW back then. <laughs> I was I was I was seven I was seven years old. That's amazing. <laughs> I was just starting to volunteer APW in 1997, but um um, you know, and then I started booking and I saw Car- how he booked him on it. Oh, it was a just like a kind of a cold match, but it was just a match. And and I remember we we're talking about like we got to figure which, out which our- match was it. I'm trying to remember who you were. Was, was, was it Boys and Girls? Was, was it- Club. Was it uh as I it was probably my, my guess because I just thinking of like one you know my one of my least favorite flat <laughs> matches I had it was uh me and uh Will was it Will um his PCW kid he's really good wrestler. yes Will, like, Roberts. Chris, Will Roberts Will Roberts Will Roberts yeah and and that was my man no because and you're right because it was that was my first that was I did a heel turn right yeah and, and you and that was that, you go over that, that match my I first remember. one. I did. did you... I went over. Yeah, I did yeah. go over. But, it, yeah. but that was my first match as a heel. Yeah, thank and God. Both, you know, me, me and Will being just where we were at, and mm-hmm. in our, you know, just being in our green, our level of being green or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a hundred percent culpability, fifty fifty on both of us. But I remember Adam specifically telling me, like, you know, just like just pointers on character stuff. Like, yeah, like, I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, man. It was my first night as a heel ever, because before then everything was easy. I was clean, baby face. And then, like, I went out, like, and you know, you can't just be Billy Badass. You, you don't mm-hmm. get to just walk to the ring like you're fucking stone cold. You have to earn that. You, uh, aside from that, you have to go out of your, you know, you have to really be a character. And I was so fucking boring. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I just remember when I first saw you, that's like, it's the first time I saw you, well, in the ring. I saw you, like, at shows, hanging out when, like, you know, the scum was working. Just around. Me, like, yeah. And... <laughs> Um, I remember telling Marcus after that show, I was like, well, we got to figure out who our core guys are going to be for the future as we're building towards the future. Cause Marcus at the time was, you know, he was bringing in names, but like at the same time, I always feel like you need names. Yes. To draw the audience, but you also need to have your local guys be over because 
if we can't book any more names, we still need some people to come want to come see the local guys, you know. So we got to build stars yeah. and local guys. So yeah, uh, I'm always looking for the young guys coming up, and of course, loved car, loved your look. I loved your your pedigree, what you had in the ring. I just I just saw potential. Marks did too. It's not just me. And I remember oh, that, course, was one, yeah. that was yeah, that was one of our our goals was okay. Let's slowly build Carl up give him good matches to learn and get better because we want him to be one of our guys. And that's why the cow palace, you know, I mean, you won the, the with the internet title to cow palace. I yeah. Think it was, right? yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. The first cow palace show. Yeah. I mean, not only that, but um, I mean, again, like, and, and I'll, of course I'm sitting here talking to you, John. So I'm going to, you know, go out of my way to get my APW shout outs and all of that. Um, but yeah, of course, all the love in the world to Marcus Mack because mm-hmm. man, he gave me he gave me the world over here. Then and, yeah. and and the, the like you said the slow build to stuff. Um, and then I remember even you know months before it was, I think it was November of 2016. I remember it, 27 May of 2017. I won the title, right? That was mm-hmm. Cow Palace. But like I mean, even matches. I want to say it was November. Um, I think it was the first show that Cody Rhodes had done for APW. Mm-hmm. And but I wrestled Matt Carlos and yeah. like just, you know, just that being like the experience that was, you know, putting it together, the match going great, uh, you know, my performance in there, like, like I grew a lot that night, you know, like and, and I'm like, I remember that being like another big like benchmark thing yeah. for me. Um, and I remember so, there was there was like a, a four way or tag at two or two, like a tag match or four. I try to remember. But I remember Jeff Cobb was in it. And it me, was, Adam, Jeff Cobb, and Jacob Fatu. Or yes. Yeah, me, yes, yeah. And I remember that, that right match. I remember your performance that match because I was like, you know what? I was, I was like, you know, you have Cobb, who's named Fatu, getting all his attention. Adam's, you know, been a longtime veteran. In our, three in our baby area. faces, three baby faces, and then me, who again, like, man, and, and I, I talk about it all the time when, when you know, I'm talking about stuff like this because, like, I, you know, eventually, like, like, BFD, big fucking deal with Carl Fredericks, Kanye West, power heel, <laughs> Carl Fredericks. I, I got I got the fuck over, man. And, and then it got to the point where by the time I dropped that title to Fatu, I came back to the next show the next month, and I was a babyface mm-hmm. because of that performance. But I had to fucking earn it, man. And like, and, and, and to be fair, it's because, you know, like I said, like it was it was new for me. It was hard for me. I wasn't a natural heel. Now, understanding it, I think I'm, I pro- maybe I am. But um, that fatal four way, like again, that was that was a hard moment for me to shine because man, I'm in there with Jeff Cobb, Jacob Fatu, mm-hmm. and Adam Thornso, and Adam Thornso in San Francisco, nonetheless. Yeah. You know, I was I was the dimmest light out of those three. But and that was, that, that and that's what I remember that match is that you end up shining in that match and really stood out. And I remember being so proud of of you for that because of you know like. There's these guys that have these reps, and you're still coming up. But then at the end of the match, it's like Carl fit in with those other three, and he held yeah. his own. And so that made me really proud. I remember just being happy to oh, see you, uh, to see you, see you come through with the performance that we that Marks and I thought knew that you could do. You know, so that's what well, I remember. That that's match why you, that's why you put me there, right? Yes, you know exactly. What I mean? that's, that's what you know. You you hoping that I would succeed that way. So yeah, yeah man, thank you. I appreciate that compliment. Uh, that was that was. Man, and again, that was you know twenty seven, and that was right after that was right after I had uh, come back from my second tryout, and I you know I had been, I had been in my shit feeling it, no you know I was supposed to be getting signed, all that stuff. So I was, mm-hmm. I but but it was I just finally, and again that was one of those nights, another one, and one of those nights. Like I said, I was the absolute dimmest light in that group, and and it was one of those that I I remember like just something something clicked. There was so it something was, happened. It was two tryouts in New Japan, right? That's what it uh, was. Two two trials with uh, WWE. Oh, WWE, that's right, Japan. that's right, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember telling Marcus, "Are you are you gonna be around here for long?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I figured, I figured WWE, but I was, I was really happy that you chose. You know, you went with New Japan because just the the basis of the fundamentals. I mean, you had good fundamentals, but they're just gonna dial you in even more, you know. And it, oh, man. and look, and look what the end result we have now. And I, I really enjoy your performance and. And I want to talk, can I ask you quickly about, you know, the young boy style, obviously, uh, the basics, concentrate on the basics. But I, what I loved about you out there is that you would add your personality 
to your offense, the drop kick, et cetera. Was that something that was encouraged by Shibata and your trainers, or was it something you wanted to do just to stand out? Uh, as a whole, it, it, it was a lot of, um, and uh, I'm, I'm glad, I don't know, I'm excited a bit to find, I'm finally be comfortable enough to where I can like talk about stuff like this. But, you know, things like you're asking for me personally, it was, it was 110% initially a lot of ask forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> um, and I mean, because there was, I mean, when I made my new Japan debut, you know, at this, this big convention in Anaheim, I wrestled Alex Coughlin mm -hmm. and we, you know, they, we were kept on opposite sides of the locker room all day. We were told to go wrestle to a 10 minute draw and not to talk to each other. And that is not what I was, you know, that's not what I was trying to do prior to coming new to, you know, <laughs> um, but that's what we did in the dojo every day, you know, just go wrestle to it. You know, he would set, Subhata Sam would set a time, we go wrestle, we go fucking work, no talking, not even like he, not even conversation between the two of us in the ring at the time. Don't <laughs> talk, just go wrestle and be good. Um, but then when it came, I mean, even like it just like now it's a signature, the Mario elbow, and it's it's the the Japanese fan named it the Mario elbow, and it makes all the sense in the world. Like when I'm you know freeze frame <laughs> the pose, and is it the video the, game Mario? Is that what you're calling it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, <laughs> right? I don't even think about that. That's yeah, funny. So okay, so that was the Japanese fans named that, but the reason I did that, like that stupid jumping elbow was because it's like stuff Adam taught me that, you know, was stuck in the back of my head forever. And that was, you know, get your, get your fucking eight by 10. Everything I do, like I'm, I'm trying, like I'm trying to create moments worth freezing in time. So like that jumping elbow, that goofy thing was just something, you know, it's a small move because we have a limited move set and it was just, okay, we're all, we, you know, everyone does jump. Yeah. You, you does one, a lot of, you know, a lot of guys do them, but like, I just know, like, not only that, but even that pose too. Like, that's my Jordan Jumpman logo. That for you know, like, yeah. I'm just like, how how can I do it like me? Do it like do it like Carl would. Everyone was doing Boston Crab, so I started doing Half Crab. Mm -hmm. Not only then High Angle Half Crab, and I was like, also, you know, I wanted to do like the Lion Tamer, not the Walls of Jericho, but like, I, you know, just, I was a WCW kid. Mm -hmm. I grew up on that. Um, and so initially it was just me, me testing stuff and hoping not to get my ass whipped when I came back. <laughs> and, and it also just like, if you do it well, you know, there's, it won't be questioned, you know, yeah. like, so every, every time I went out and I tried something and it was good, Shabana Sama said, yes, keep that, you know? And then eventually once we, once we got into it and we were touring with Ring of Honor and everything, Shabana San, like I, you know, I got to give him his credit within this within the system he did such a good job uh with three of us with alex clark and i of just nurturing what's special about the three of us once once we started doing things you know he he started working specifically on like giving whether it be even like passing down certain moves of his to me because that's just my style and they fit in with me and he's done the same thing with narita and narita does stuff of his that like i could it just it, it would be forced it would be too much if i was trying to do that mm -hmm. right and then like just the way alex just you know he, he knew like look at alex like and alex is like his fucking baby i'm telling you like that's like his pride and joy because <laughs> like he he got me years in he got clark years in alex is ground up so he knows that like that's our hulk we have alex so mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, you you pick people up and you throw them, you know, Clark, <laughs> you ju your juke tackle fucking rhino, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. eventually he he nurtured all of that stuff. But um, I think you know we, we're talking young lion days, and you know again, I you know I I was the man out of that group. I won the cup. I made history. I did something that only eleven other people have ever done in the history of pro wrestling, and it means a whole lot. And um, a lot of times, you know, up until now, this like this is the most assertive I've been with, you know, giving myself, you know, these these roses or you know whatever you want to say. But you know, um, that that group of young lions was insane. And you know, out of the three of us, to be able to in any way, shape, or form stand out at all, I think says a whole lot about me because Alex 
Coglin and Clark Connors are two of the best wrestlers on this planet. And I'll stand by that. When it comes to, uh, you mentioned uh, Shibata, and I kind of, I was wondering, like, when when he made his return at Wrestle Kingdom, I imagine that would have been wild for you guys to see. Like, do, do you do you remember how, what you were thinking? You know, watching that thing. <laughs> every time, every time he stepped in the ring since his injury, since he's been, you know, it's been deemed that things are done. Uh, he's it's been we haven't had any prior knowledge to it. So, like, the G1 2019, when he did the run-in and fought Bullet Club, we had no we had no idea. And I'm certain that his family had no idea. <clears throat> so when it came, so then the exhibition with Zack Sabre Jr. had no clue. Um, so by the time of Wrestle Kingdom, we, you know, we were up, ready to watch, but it was, and then for it to be Narita, you know, and to see him go out and live, you know? Um, I mean, he said it himself, right? He's like, I'm not going out there to die. I'm going out there to live. Uh, it was it was fucking special, man. Um, you know, and, he, and he's not, as far as being a trainer, aside from, you know, bumping in things, you know, that restrict him from that. He's, he, he gets in with us. He, he warms up when we start warming up, he does his own warm up, but he warms up and then he shows us beats our ass. He's, he's in the ring, hands on training us all day. And then when we're cleaning, he starts his workout and he works out for an hour and a half, two hours while we're cleaning and doing our chores. He's not, you know, it's, it's he's, he's, st- he's a wrestler. He's the wrestler. You know, no matter what, and he he's never turned it off. So for him to, to see him be able to go out there and and live and do it, you know, as far as people like me, people like us are concerned, this is why we're put here on this planet. So you know, to see him go out there and actually be able to do that, whether it's few and far between, it's it's special and it, you know makes me very happy for him. So just to give folks context, we had talked a little bit earlier about the first time that, that I interviewed you and it was John was setting things up because, you know, he was, uh, you know, there was some stuff with premiere and I got to talk to Jeff, got to talk to Jr. Uh, when Shayna made her debut or second match, I guess for, for John talked to Shayna and, and John, what was the name of her opponent again? Cause I talked to her as well. Uh, Colleen Schneider, Colleen. So, you know, we did a few interviews and then it was you and I remember, uh, and this was before this podcast with the people that are listening who know this as John and I together. This was actually even before then. It was just kind of a you know a side project. But I remember telling you like, you know, when I watch you, like there's like a natural athleticism that you have that if I didn't know, you know, if the easy comparison back then was like. He moves kind of like how Randy Orton moves, and I remember telling oh, you that. Oh, you said it. You said yeah. So again, you said it. So and, and, and so that's where my mind was going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> when when you wrestle today, and people try to compare you, they go, "Oh, have you seen this guy, Carl? Do do you still get do you get the Orton comparisons, or are there new comparisons of people who think, oh, you know, he he's kind of like this guy or like this guy, or are there no comparisons because you're you know you're you're your own sort of individual like that um man again uh to now you know now that i think of it you might be one of the very first people to uh to give the orton comparison and now that i'm thinking like timeline wise because by the time i got to new japan or by the time i got to japan in 2019 uh i've been with new japan for a whole year at that point but by the time i got to japan you know just uh you know, the shape I was in, the, the trunks, the boots, I wasn't wearing boots in, on the indies, you know, the look, uh, I started getting those comparisons from the Japanese fans. And of course, me being Gaijin, the tattoos. And now, uh, you know, I have two sleeves even more. So I have a similar build, which, you know, I'm proud of. So like when I get those comparisons, like two, two separate reasons, I think. Like one, like your reason, and you mentioned as a preface to the or thing, you know, it's like the smoothness you said and the yep. athleticism. Yep. Um, and that's the one that means the world to me because it, in my eyes, and this was not even, you know, this, this is years, you know, years after you made that 
this is very recent, maybe in the last year and a half, two years of me, like, I think that's, um, I think that, like, that's my number one. Like, that's my go, I think. And it's, and it's just now, just cause like the things that, and that's, that's newer with me now as you know, the most mature version of me in my career, strictly based on what I like, right? I, I wrestle that way, the, the, you know, those things are complimenting me on because like, that's how, that's how I dance, you know, like that's my art when I'm in that ring and, and I'm performing, like, that's how I think it should look for like, that's how I imagine it looking. And he's one of the reasons why now, you know, that I look back and I understand things, but, um, you know, being, being even compared to just the, the you know, the amount of smooth, his timing, the, uh, um, man, the, the, the emotion, you want to talk character, emotion, all that stuff, right? Like you asked me, he's, he's the perfect, absolute perfect wrestler. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, so I like, I get that from time to time. Sometimes I, I like a good amount of times, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm bad about, uh, <laughs> giving myself credit to an extent, especially with stuff like this, because, you know, the internet will grab it and take it. But, <laughs> but, um, you know, like, like he's, he's one of the people that I do get like some sort of comparison to, um, and it's for stuff like that. Other than that, um, you know, to be honest, like, I don't like, I don't think I'm, you know, getting a bunch of comparisons. Um, but because like, you know, maybe like, I don't, maybe I'm not, I don't think I'm being talked about to be honest, like, which like, uh, you know, on, on the grand scheme of thing, at least in the sense where like, I'm just not in those conversations, but, uh, uh, Aaron, um, uh, so I was I was complimented at uh, at uh, Championship Wrestling United Wrestling by uh, Damian Sandow, which made me uh, you know um, a lot of respect for that man. Uh, he's just even the few, the few times you know a handful four or five times I've been around him at these shows I've learned a lot from him. Um, but it, it was it was Ricky Steamboat said that I, I wrestle he said that I wrestle like Ricky Steamboat or I remind him of that when I when I wrestle and that was another really big one so you have a really busy weekend so when most people listen to this it'll already be Friday you have three big matches uh on your if people want to follow your Twitter um at Carl Fredericks underscore uh you tweeted a few hours ago as of this recording <laughs> Proving a fucking point this weekend. Now you just said, you know, maybe you're not getting talked about. I mean, is that is it, is that part like, is that this weekend is like, hey, you know, this is a weekend to kind of, you know, get on those radars. Like, is that how you see it? Yeah, I, I saw it as an opportunity, absolutely. And I, you know, um, and I'm I'm pretty quiet. I mean, I I don't really I don't fuck with the internet, man. Like I, I don't, um, you know, I want to, you know, like, I, I want to, I want to promote, you know, I want to promote my fights. I want to sell fights. I want to, I want to work hard for my company. I want to do all that stuff. I love interacting with the fans, all that, you know, but that double-edged sword that the internet is like, I'm not, I'm not active in conversations. Um, you know, I don't, I don't participate in wrestling Twitter, things of that sort. So I know that's a detriment to me when it comes to, I could be getting more exposure and I could be working harder for that, but it's also like just in ways that I don't fucking care about, you know, but this weekend I have a show on Friday in San Francisco, which is the city that may be in front of this. I remember when I came back, I wrestled in West at West coast pro for the first time being an APW guy. And I remember just the reception they gave me. And not only that, but just as soon as I make my entrance, I look around the room you know, they're losing their shit, but I'm looking around and I'm, I, I recognize everybody from AP. They were APW, you know, it's my APW fans. Like that city made me. And I'm teaming with the Reno scum for the first time. And I'm someone, you know, I, I, I do their tag. I steal their tag moves. And, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm so proud. I have, you know, my entrance jacket. I have ROE on the right sleeve. <laughs> it's Reno over everything. You know, I, I, I wear that proudly because I remember going to, my my two tryouts in Florida with WWE, you know, I was you know I was doing great at those tryouts, and the other workers, which were they were few because it was all models and athletes and shit, but the other wrestlers were like, where do you wrestle? Like, where did you come from? You know, they're all East Coast people. 
they knew each other and you know, I told them I wrestled in California and I was from Reno and they're like, what, like, what do you mean? Like they look at me in disgust. Like, what do you, what do you, you know, and, and, see, and you're laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, the time frame. you know, as a graveyard. And like, I remember Adam, you know, and Dave teach, you know, telling me that. And like, I didn't understand, but then when I was in Florida, like it, it pissed me off, man. Like it, like I, it, it, it put a huge chip on my shoulder. Cause I was, I came up at the same time. It's 2015, 2016, 2017. Right. And I'm hearing that shit in Florida. And I know when I go back to L, you know, or when I come back to the West coast, I got me, Jake Atlas, Brody King, jungle boy, Jacob Fatu. Like there's this whole group of ki- young kids who haven't even done shit yet. And I'm like, no, these like, what do you mean? Like, just the way they looked at it. But I, you know, I understand the grand scheme of things, but Friday, you know, I'm going to be at West coast pro. I, I'm not there every month. I'm, I'm there every now and then, but I'm teaming with my trainers for the first time. And I'm, we're teaming against three hungry kids, young kids that I, I like, I, I know them, I respect them. And that's, this is an opportunity one. And again, teaming, I'm teaming with the scum. So there's a whole lot of pressure on me, everything they've taught me. And I've gone off and I've, I've traveled the world and I've been in the Tokyo Dome. I've done all this cool shit. I made history, but I still feel this pressure that I got to be as good as Adam and Dave that night. And, I, you know, and, and, and that means a whole lot to me. So that's important to me. And I also want to show these three fucking kids that, you know, I'm, I'm one of the ones that put, put this shit on. You know, I've been, I've been one of the ones pushing this West Coast shit from day one and it's not you know there's no, no hey nothing bad but like you're gonna fucking know who your senpai is that's friday saturday i'm in washington tc wrestling for the first time and i'm wrestling ren Navrita singles for the third time in my career ever 2019 clark and i went to japan for the g1 tour we opened i, I wrestled my first night in japan ever me and clark teaming with kenta versus tanahashi shota and Ren. And you want to talk pressure, not trying to come back to the locker room and get your ass beat. We, me and Clark wrestled those two boys. We didn't know them. We didn't like them. We know they didn't know us and they didn't like us. And it, it, I guarantee you for the way things turned out, that Ren at least went back to that, went backstage to his, to his trainers and got his ass whipped because I tapped him out that first night. A month later, we come back to Young Lions Cup and we ended the tour with another win against those two. A month later, we come back to Young Lions Cup and I opened that tournament with a loss to Renderita. And it's the only time, barring as far as I can think of, is, is a tag league match with Yoshihashi, which again, is tag league, you know, singles is the only thing that matters. There's a singles match that I've tapped out. Ren tapped me out. I opened up the Young Lions Cup with a loss to him. Someone that I had comfortably beaten in Japan multiple times, tag matches again. I whipped his ass in Seattle. I whipped his ass in Los Angeles. I know San Francisco. And I opened out with a loss, and it chapped my ass. It hurt so bad, and I was so disappointed. And it was not easy to go back to Shibata San afterwards, and, I, and, and the reception I got was not good. And I understand why. And then I turned that around, and I won out. I lasted. He didn't. I won. I proved I was the fucking man of that crop. I was the first to graduate the LA Dojo. Again, far above Narita, everybody, all these kids. And I'm moving, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing shit 2021. And then I get another chance. It's the LA Dojo showcase nonetheless. The first one I main evented against Clark Connors, I beat him. I wrestled Brandon Narita one-on-one again. And the kid had had... For the time, you know, for I have to say has. Right now he has my number, 0-2. And, and that kills me. And it kills me to say it. And it kills me now to talk about it. It pisses me off talking about it because I know all the momentum I have going. I know everything that I have going on for me. Just talking back, looking back, retrospect, everything where I've come from, how well I'm fucking doing, man. But this Saturday, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the pissing missing piece to the puzzle. To prove that I'm the fucking man in this group because I beat everybody else. They they haven't touched me. Ren has. Ren's the only one that has. And he's he's beat Fred Rosser. He's he's been doing amazing things on this show. But Saturday, I already told you what Friday means to me. Saturday is is Carl right now. 
Friday, Friday is, is, is I'm trying to, I'm trying to please everybody. I'm trying to do what, what's expected of me. Saturday, that's for me. And then on Sunday in Philadelphia, this one's going to be short and sweet. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but this one's going to be short and sweet. <laughs> QT Marshall, QT Marshall, QT Marshall, what you, you think what you do in the factory is anything, anything that can be replicated, anything can be compared to the LA Dojo. You see, look, you, you call it the factory for a reason. You can you can churn out you can churn, you can you can copy and paste the shit you do all day every day. Look how many people since 2018 first class LA Dojo Shibata Sun, not the Santa Monica Dojo. That's a different thing. Santa Monica Dojo, LA Dojo, two different fucking things. I'm talking to you, Rocky Romero, TJ Perkins, Samoa Joe, Brian Danielson, two separate fucking things since 2018. There's what six of us, and then and then the No Gay jo- Dojo boys came over. You know what you do with the factory that can be copy and pasted, duplicated, replicated over and over again. You can churn that bullshit out over and over again. We work with precious materials only in the LA Dojo. We are five star recruits. We're the best of the best. We are Marines in this world. And if you don't believe me, you can ask MVP because that's what that man told me when I came to him asking for advice because I was having a hard time getting through the dojo. We are the few in the proud. And on Sunday, I'm going to prove to you the, dis- the difference because you can- you're considering me a student. And if you're the head of this whole thing, when I beat you, that's going to say everything. So, huh. so, so, okay. So, uh, obviously, QT is uh, is somebody who you know we see from time to time on AEW television, and New Japan uh, is working with AEW. There's that Forbidden Door show coming up uh, in what is it in June, and then also June 26th, also with Impact. So there are multiple opportunities, and you know you you, you work in uh, New Japan Strong uh, on New Japan World if you want to check out Carl. But there are other opportunities out there with with uh, relationships and partnerships that New Japan has. Uh, are we going to see you on some of those other shows because of these partnerships? Um, I sure hope so. Uh, as far as the, you know, the answer that I can give you is that I sure hope so. Uh, I'm absolutely dying to be on those shows, and there's there's a lot of people in those other promotions, and all, again, like you said, guys and guys in my group, guys in my in my my generation, my class that I that I've yet to get in there and really touch. Guys, I've not wrestled singles. You know, Brody King, Ricky Stark, another one, um, and I I believe I'm absolutely as good as anybody. And win, lose, or draw, I'm dying to prove that. Uh, we're gonna, we'll let you go here, and I really appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. But I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, Canvas Theory. Uh, I, in my Facebook feed, I'm starting to see some Canvas Theory ads with your face on <laughs> good. them, and yeah. oh, good, good, uh, good. And, and you're wearing a, a pretty sweet looking hat. So talk a little bit about that uh, before we get out of here. Oh man! So uh, this collaboration with Canvas Theory, I'm I'm so excited. They've been so good to me. Um, they reached out to me, and and the whole the whole thing we want to do is there's gonna be a whole a line a collection, uh, the Okami collection. Okami in Japanese means wolf, and Kami also means spirit. Uh, the the wolf represents a very similar ideal as a spiritual deity in Japanese culture, as it does to my culture, my Native American culture. Um, hence, you know, that's where the alpha wolf comes with, <coughs> comes from. And uh, so last week we dropped the, the first hat. We're doing uh, much more. And they're doing like what I appreciate the most is they're doing uh, a lot to just highlight me as an individual. And it comes to my music, my DJing, my my personal interests, and things like that. So it's not so much wrestling merch as it is lifestyle streetwear. Uh, tomorrow, and again, I guess you said most people will be listening tomorrow. So I'll give you this exclusive um, heads up on what tomorrow's drop is. It's uh, tomorrow's Friday the 13th. Uh, tomorrow's we're dropping the Slasher 3D hat. And it's... Um, <clears throat> 
you know, my love of horror movies, and especially Friday the 13th. It's a, it's a Jason mask, essentially. It's a hockey mask with my tribal tattoo designs on it. As you know, most of the, some, well, some of those hockey masks, they differ uh, movie to movie, but they have those triangles, they have those prints on them. So what they did was a hockey mask with my tattoo designs on them and the hats layered in 3D with a Roman numeral three on the side, layered uh, blue, and, blue and red 3D because the third movie, Friday 13th part three is the first movie that Jason gets his mask. And uh, that was originally released in 3D. And it's also kind of notorious for being like really bad 3D. <laughs> uh, one, one of, still one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's also a movie I've decided, you know, eventually when I'm up and running a wrestling school, something like that, like I just want to do like beginner stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm very, I want to do like the easy stuff and, uh, but I'm like, we're going to do horror movie study. We're going to watch like old bad horror movies. This is one of them. And like when so-and-so, when a character does something stupid in the movie and you laugh at it because it's bad, right? Makes sense. It's correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so when, when someone does that and one of my students pops or talks shit, I'm going to tell them, well, that's what the fans do when you do such and such <laughs> before. So, Cause it's, it's the same thing. Right. It's, and, and then like, there's the group of like biker, there's like this biker gang that's supposed to be tough. Mm-hmm. And like the lead, the lead guy's name is spider. And he has a <laughs> shitty jacket with a spider on the back. I'm like, that's what you look like. in your <laughs> fucking lame leather. Like, <laughs> you know, it's constructive criticism, but like, it's, I, th- I think it'd be like a really fun way to show people. I'm like, okay. Like, cause they can relate. Cause if they're reacting, that way and i tell them that like this is what people think when you do such and so like it'll it'll click i i would think um but yeah i don't know i just everything is pro wrestling and the only movies i watch for the most part are horror movies and um we're probably horror and pro wrestling are probably considered like the lowest forms like the, <laughs> the cheapest forms of entertainment above pornography so they're hand in hand <laughs> i guess <laughs> you know like <laughs> Uh, yeah, cam- uh, so these, the, yeah, these canvas theory drops. Yeah, the second hat drops tomorrow. Um, man, they've been so great to me. Also, thank you so much to Jerry Besto with the Besto Co. for um, we went to him for all the media. He did the photo shoot. He did all the uh, the video footage. We we're putting the reels. He and he made it very comfortable for me because like it's it's really hard for me to go out and do photo shoots like i'm not a model i have no fucking interest in being a model i don't want to go be a cool guy you know so he made me <laughs> feel very comfortable doing cool guy stuff and um yeah so i can't thank them enough because it's 100 percent canvas theory came to me with this and and they they did all the heavy lifting we we had like an hour and a half long uh zoom call sometime in like december november sometime around then just to get to know me and like the uh, the vision for what we have doing and the, the very first try with they brought me we have shirts sweaters all the everything they brought to me initially it was just it was amazing I loved it and it, it was 100% me and what I feel comfortable you know putting out there because I don't I don't like to endorse stuff or do anything that I don't believe in or that I'm not excited about so they, they've been wonderful and I can't thank them enough 